just been on uh, BBC London, Robert Elms, which was a great pleasure chatting away about Lanestone. Thanks, Robert, as well. Um, but I'm just wandering back through this sort of part, of weird, it's a weird part of town north of Oxford Street, between here and sort of Tottenham Court Road. I was associated with Patrick Hamilton and the Midnight Bell, but I just thought I'd shoot some footage whilst I'm walking through because there's loads of really fascinating things, including this thing over here. Of course, October is Black History Month, so this feels particularly apt. There's a plaque, 1745 to 1797. You have to forgive me for not being able to pronounce the name. Aluja uh, uh, Aquano lived and published here in 1789. His autobiography on suffering the barbarity of slavery for which paved the way for its abolition. It's an incredibly significant place, isn't it? And this is a really interesting street, and it's, um, it's called Riding House Street, and you see a sign there over on the right, but opposite facing it, on that old sort of building there, probably early 20th century building, it actually says Union Street. So somewhere along the line it's changed its name. And here you, you've got a load of new kind of residential apartment blocks. Bang in the centre of London. Like I say, we're, we're just a little bit north of Oxford Street. This is a really interesting building here. TJ Bolton and Sons, gas and electrical engineers. I think it says established in 1808. And there you see TJ Bolton and Sons, range of stove manufactory established in 1808. This building itself seems to date from 1903, it says there. This is also in Riding House Street. I think back in the, the time when these apartment blocks were built there at the turn of the century, they were built for kind of like office clerks and the new sort of breed of city workers that were moving in, you, you know, young women that were moving to work in administration and uh, retail and, and the rag trade around this area. So they, these apartment blocks were built for a kind of new type of resident. This is called Pearson Square. It looks like a brand new development. It's another new addition to the changing face of London. Bloody hell, I had no idea this was here. And you wouldn't from the street, you could walk around it and not know it was here. It's a bit kind of bland and ubiquitous, isn't it? Not a lot of character. It reminds me of some of the development you see around King's Cross. What's interesting about this though is it appears to be residential and uh, yeah, it can't have been many new residential developments in this area for some time. It wouldn't be a walk around central London without a, a Dickens reference and there we have one here in Cleveland Street. Dickens lived in that house twice. It's close to the Cleveland Street workhouse. Now it's a wonderful little shop that sells buttons and belts. What a wonderful throwback. How appropriate for a, a former home of Charles Dickens. It's good to see this place hasn't changed much. It's actually featured in a video that I, uh, I made 10 years ago, exactly 10 years ago, when I walked from uh, uh, Leightonstone to Paddington. I came down through here, through Fitzrovia, and that building was there, and exactly the same. A mural of some of the famous people associated with the area. like a really good old London boozer, doesn't it? The King and Queen, Foley Street, yeah. Cleveland Street. Never been in there. Have you been in there? Leave a comment below. And here we go, another huge site here on Charlotte Street, number 80 Charlotte Street, multiplex. That is a vast site, I'm just trying to remember, I can't even remember what was there before. Real mixture in Charlotte Street, there used to be some sort of 80s blocks here, 70s, 80s kind of office blocks. So I'll just replace one of those. 
So Charlotte Street is one of the kind of centres of the media industry in London, particularly sort of advertising, you get a lot of that around Charlotte Street. There's a few sort of edit places around here as well, edit suites for TV and film, advertising though, mainly. And that place over there, I would say, for me, in my experience, is that's like the most authentic Italian cafe in London. There you go, you're going to go out on a limb. That's the place that most reminds me of the bars in Italy. I lived in Italy for about nine months, and that place comes the closest. You can go in there, they get Gazette della Sport on the day, there's people in there chatting Italian, it's nice. I think I'm going to have to go in for coffee now. <laughs> Open walk. This is one of my favourite little streets in London. This it's a real treasure. Just sitting back off the Euston Road. It's a real anachronism. And a Jeffrey Fletcher Street. Cartwright Gardens. This is uh, not far from King's Cross Station, so you can see there's lots of hotels here. Strange place. I used to walk through here at, at night, quite late at night when I used to walk home when I lived up at the Angel. It had a slightly seedy feel to it, actually. This is a very sort of fragmentary video, isn't it? Little snapshots, little vignettes, places around central London. It's difficult to take this on as a whole, actually. I came in to do a walk, which I will do when I take you up to uh, Pentonville and we'll do all the pleasure gardens and all that business. But for now, it's just a few little bits. And there we've got Marchmont Street, which I really love Marchmont Street, another one of those great London streets, place I'm always drawn back to. And Judd Books, I absolutely have to go in Judd Books, I can never walk past it, even if it's closed. And of course, I didn't get out of Judd Books without making some purchases, a collection of uh, Philip K. Dick short stories. And a book about um, Robin Hood Gardens, which is very sadly in the process of being demolished as we speak. I'll have to try and get down there and capture what's happening before it's all gone. Marchmont Street is great. It feels like there's a whole world in Marchmont Street. And of course, on one side of Marchmont Street, we have the brutalist wonder of the Brunswick Centre. Some people would say this is one of the finest pieces of architecture in the whole of London. Right up there with the Barbican. Another place I used to come and sort of just spend some time and while away an hour or two. And the great thing about the Brunswick Centre is you've got a piece of absolutely stunning architecture. There was, you know, these were built as council flats. I don't know how many of them still are council flats, but I imagine a decent proportion of them. Little Russell Street, just near the British Museum. I really love this street. It really feels like a vestige of old London mixture of kind of Georgian and Victorian. It's a Dickensian feel to some of it. I've always been particularly beguiled by this building here, Museum Chambers. It's just a thing that was quite a romantic place to live. There's a wonderful film from the late 60s called uh, Praise Marks and Pass the Ammunition. What a great title. Uh, it's notable because I think it's the first film role uh, for John Thor, uh, who obviously later found fame in the Sweeney and, and as Expector Morse. But um, he plays the title in this film and I think the character lives here in museum chambers. There's lots of scenes where you see him leaning uh, out of his balcony with a view of the British Museum. And that's the British Museum there at the end of the street. The London Review bookshop over on the right hand side. Could have been one of the balconies 
here. In fact, actually, it could have been that balcony over the front door of museum chambers. It was used in the film. Very difficult film to kind of get hold of or see. Written by Tarek Ali, I think. Thanks for watching. You know, it's a little vignette, a little snapshot of that particular, some areas around central London. Always keen to hear suggestions for other places you think I can go and walk to. Uh, someone's recently suggested East Ham, um, so I'm, I'm going to be going there soon on the video. But if there's anywhere else you think, well, you know, go and have a look here or go for a walk here, please uh, drop it in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts and suggestions.